Hey everyone, Jason here at Alorium Technology. And in this video, I'm gonna provide you with some updated information about how to use our flash load utility, our Evo flash load program for loading a new FPGA image onto your Evo M51 board. Now I just released a video a couple of weeks ago showing you how to do this, but there were a couple of extra steps you had to do with that version of the tool that have been updated and changed as of just this last week. So the first week of July and things have changed since then. So we wanna provide you a little bit of an update in time. I'll remove that other video probably entirely, but I kinda of want them both up there now in case someone has an older version of the tool. So here's what we need to do. First of all, the cool thing that it does is it eliminates the need to run this sketch from Arduino before loading the FPGA image. And so if you watch that first video, you'll recall that you had to load this sketch that I've got open here in Arduino called Evo Flash Load. That sort of prepared the Evo board to be able to take on the new image. You don't need to do that anymore, which is pretty handy. So that's been just pulled right into the utility itself. But in order to get that, we are gonna have to run Arduino just long enough to grab the newest boards package Let's do that first. As always, in order to get a new boards package, we go to tools, board, and then board manager. And we'll open that up. It takes a couple of minutes for Arduino to go out and kind of query all the different board indexes and indices, <laughs> the different boards that are available to be updated. So it'll grab all the, look through all those platforms. As soon as that's done, we'll be able to search on Alorium. And the Alorium Technology SAMD boards that's the package that you wanna update. Now, I did that earlier this morning already, and so I don't have an update button here, but you can see I've got version 1.2.1, which is the latest version. If you've got something older, you of course will have an update button. You can click that and get that installed. And what that'll do is that downloads a bunch of stuff as part of our package, including this new version of Evo Flash Load. I'm gonna close this because we don't need that. And I'm gonna to jump to a terminal so we can give it a try and I can show you how this works. Okay, so I've got my terminal open. And what I've done in this case is I've actually gone down and I'm sitting here in the directory where Arduino puts all of the hardware board package support information. Now I'm sitting, I'm using uh, my Mac, so I'm on Mac OS. It's a very similar path in Windows as well, and in Linux also, I believe. The path is uh, your user directory, then library, Arduino 15, packages, Alorium tools, and then evil flash load, and then 1.1.0 is the current version of the tool. All right, so if we look in this directory now, let's do a listing here. The, the program we care about right now is this Evo flash load. So this is the pre-compiled binary that we're gonna use. And there are a few other files in here that we can talk about, including uh, the BOSAC loader itself. I'm not gonna get into the details of that. Uh, also, this directory for Evo flash load, this is something that allows you to load it as a menu item within Arduino. Again, a, a, another time, another date, another video, we'll get into that, but you, you can do it. Let's focus for right now just on loading the FPGA image. And we're gonna wanna run this application actually out of this directory. Now in the prior video, I made a copy of this and I moved it to a different location and I was able to run it from there. That, that can work in this case, but one of the things it needs is it does need to know where this BOSAC driver is or this BOSAC program so that it can load it. I guess I don't know if it's BOSAC or BOSIC. Either way, it needs to know where it is. And if you run it right in this directory, it's just a relative path in the same directory and it'll just work better. So instead now what I'm doing, I'm running it here and I'm pointing to where the image files are. So let's look at those. I've got another uh, directory that I created just in one of my project directories. And in here I have just a couple of Im image files. Now the if you look at the extension for the files that we have that go onto our board, the FPGA images, they're called Evo image. Uh, because it has the FPGA image itself as well as, well as some other information in there uh, just for making sure we check data integrity and some other key information that we use to be able to, to do this process. I've got two of these images in here. One is the default. That's what we ship out on the board. That's the manufacturing image. And then I've got this other one that is a servo image. So this has the servo, a bunch of servo accelerator blocks all stitched together. And we're really using that one for our servo tray product. Okay, I wanna copy the path here that we're gonna need because I'm gonna pass that into the program. Okay, now we'll go back over to where we have the Evo flash load and I've got the syntaxes sitting here actually in my command history. And all I need to do is do Evo underscore flash load dash I and then the full path to the image that I want. And actually let's do the servo image because I already have this released image, I believe. 
Nope, let me back up. Should be Evo. There we go. Let's use that one. Now the thing it does that's unique compared to the way it worked before is before it would immediately ask you would go out and query all the devices hanging off from USB and it would say, hey, which one do you wanna use? And you'd have to explicitly select it. Well, now it goes out, it will look at the vendor ID, product ID that's out there and it will find the board and it'll start uploading that sketch. The first thing it'll do is put that sketch on there, that Evo flash load sketch. So it prepares the board to take the image and then it starts programming the FPGA image. And you'll start to see here this finish A page. You'll see that start clicking up from 100. It does every uh, 200 pages until it hits that 2944. If you happen to have two Evo boards plugged in, it will ask you which one you want to program. So that mechanism is still there, but you don't have to explicitly enter it every time. It's smart enough now to just go out and query it. Let's let this run. I'm going to jump ahead in time here so we don't have to watch all this programming. This whole thing just takes, you know, a few minutes to do, but we'll jump ahead in a few seconds here. Okay, so we hit that finished A page, 2900 of 2944. FPGA, FPGA image load is complete. And then it looks like it went to run the sketch and it lost the device on the reset. So it didn't actually finish running the get Evo info, but let's bring up, that happens once in a while. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. We'll keep rolling with it. This is actually the first time I've gone through this process. So this is anything that's new and exciting with it is new to me as well. But what we could do is we can go here under examples, getting started, get Evo info. And once that comes up, we'll make sure that the port is in the port list. Okay, it says it's there. Let's try loading it. and we'll see what happens. I suspect the reason we lost connectivity to it was that it actually resets, and so we that disappeared momentarily. Hopefully this will work, and everything will be great. Give it just a second. Okay. So we'll open this up. Okay, so it finished and you can see here that we've got you know, 10M25. What tells me that it loaded that servo image is that it's got this wonky number for the release as well as the number of XBs. That's because those weren't configured. This image right now is for internal use. We're just doing some testing on it. And so these configuration, this configuration information isn't in there currently. And so we'll change that when we release the image for good. Let's go and repeat that process only this time I will do it with the default one and we should get at least a somewhat decent information coming out of the get Evo info. I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole load process this time. I'll just jump right to it. Okay. It is done now. Two things to notice here. The first one is that when I first called this program, we got this, this failure and it aired out and I had my terminal window open. So back in Arduino, I had opened up the serial monitor window so you could see what it was doing when we had to load it through Arduino. And uh, that can often cause this to fail if that window is connected. So that serial port's being used to talk to the Arduino serial monitor, it can fail. So you wanna make sure you have that closed. So I closed it, reran it again. It went through the whole process, finished programming, and then this time stayed connected through the reset sequence. And so you can see here, it, it ran get Evo info as part of the programming. And now we're back to a board revision and some information down here that makes some sense because it, it doesn't have those uh, basically bogus information in those config regs. So that tells me that the new image update worked and we've, we're back to the original default image. That's it. Everything is all just encapsulated in this one programming file now or this one program, I should say. Very, very easy to load. And as we continue to release images that you may wanna use on Evo M51, it'll be super easy for you to be able to load those just by hitting this command line. Or if you're integrating our product into something else, you'll be able to bury this within maybe some of your own program code or something to do that kind of updating. So that should hopefully help you out a lot. If you give this a try and you have any questions or you're running into any issues, please send us an email, support at lauriumtech.com. The whole team sees that or we'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. We'll make sure you're up and running with your Evo M51 or any of your products that you get from us. We love hearing from you and trying to help you out. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this helps and we'll talk to you very soon.